What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Believe in Mommy Heat, brought to you by the Believe Network. As always, I'm your host, Anthony Donardo. Once again, coming to you on the audio side, Apple Pod, Spotify, etc. And on the video side, just search Anthony Donardo on YouTube. And timestamps are down below because I, f- I feel like I'll be yapping quite a bit this episode because there's not a lot going on. But Heat fans are currently upset at the moment. I should say I'm recording this on Saturday, July 27th at about 6 p.m., And the reason Heat fans are mad is because Tyus Jones, someone who would have been perfect with the Miami Heat, a a point guard's point guard, very high assist, low turnover, can shoot the ball, would have been a great fit here because he is an elite facilitator. He just signed with the Phoenix Suns for a minimum contract. And of course, Heat fans are upset, rightfully so, because we're sitting here with Thomas Bryant and Alec Burks and all these other bums. Let me not say bums. I I think the Heat have a a solid roster, but obviously a guy like Tyus Jones is exactly someone that we could have used. And before anyone comments it, I will say that we have Tyus Jones at home and his name is Isaiah Stevens. So that does help lighten the burden a little bit of not getting someone like Tyus Jones at such a bargain because he did sign for a minimum. It was only like $3.3 million with the Suns. Now, I think the Suns could use him. I'll just talk on that that aspect of it for a second because all of their guards are pretty like ball dominant, which Tyus Jones is. So that part doesn't make a lot of sense there. But a lot of, well, let me not say their guards are ball dominant. I, I do feel like those guys could play off ball because, you know, Bill, Booker, KD, they're such great shooters. But they're also great isolation players and they are great with the ball. So overall, I don't like the fits of that team, right? Which is why they got swept in like the first round last year. But anyways... A guy like Tyus Jones, who doesn't, who is not looking to score, can maybe help run a better offense and help those three isolation-heavy players kind of mesh better together. Maybe they can change their whole scheme instead of saying, "Hey, it's your turn to cook, book. It's your turn to cook, Beal." You know, now you take over KD. Maybe they can actually run an offensive set, and Tyus Jones could supposedly help with that. But obviously, on the Miami Heat, he would have been amazing here because the last time the Heat had a true point guard was who? People say Kyle Lowry, he was good here for maybe two months, and then he was pretty cheeks after that, pun intended there. But obviously, Isaiah Stevens, I guess I should finish talking about him. He's currently on an Exhibit 10, which means he is guaranteed to be here through training camp. So if they want him to be on the roster, you know, to play in the regular season, that's a decision they'd have to make come October. And I do fully expect them to cut Drew Smith and sign Isaiah Stevens. I had a whole video talking about that. I think it might have even been my last video. But just to kind of summarize that, I think the Heat feel bad for Drew Smith just because he kind of had that tragic, you know, ACL tear last year. And as far as I'm aware, as long as he's on a two-way contract, he continues getting paid. So although he's hurt right now, he's still able to get paid. He's still able to be in the Heat center, getting rehab on his knee and just everything like that, you know, be involved with the organization. So I think that's why the Heat are keeping Drew Smith around just to kind of help him out, do him a solid because I think they like him as a player. But at this point, even the Heat front office can't deny Isaiah Stevens is just on a different level. So I do think come October, uh, we'll, you know, when training camp's about to end, I think we'll see the Heat cut Drew Smith and kind of get a Isaiah Stevens that final two-way spot, which would play a lot of similar roles, you know, as Tyus Jones is. But Tyus Jones is like a proven guy. I mean, what do you have, like six or seven assists to, to one turnover ratio last season? He would have been insane here, man. They, there's already questions about our starting uh, backcourt and how they fit because Tyler Hero and Terry Rozier are so ball dominant. They're both shooters. They both need the ball to score. Tyus Jones could have got this team into their set. We complain about how how uh, the Bam and Abayo, no one can get him in his spots. They don't have a lob thrower for him. Now, Terry Rozier, I, I think, is decent at that. And Tyler's shown flashes too. But Tyus Jones is elite at that. You could have had someone to get Bam the ball. You could have had someone to get Khalil Ware the ball. I just think Tyus Jones and the Miami Heat would have been a match made in heaven. And I don't think I'd need to do a lot of convincing here. I think most Heat fans would agree with me. Now, Isaiah Stevens can be that, but if he is on a two-way when the season comes, there's only a certain number of games that he can play. And, you know, his limit as two-way players have a limit before they run out, and he would not be eligible for the postseason. Now that he do have one roster spot left, they can't fill it because that would put them over the second apron. That's why they didn't sign sign Tyus Jones now. And I do know that the two-way players, if they were to play every game, like a guy like Keyshawn Johnson might, his limits would run out in January. And by January, his prorated contract value will be less than what the second apron is. So then by January, they could sign one of these two-way guys. 
But still, they got one roster spot as of right this second. So let's say Isaiah Stevens and Kishad get a lot of, you know, let's say they get a lot of run in the first half of the season. And if both those guys play well, well, then they can only sign one of them. So even if we like Isaiah Stevens, say, hey, we don't need Tyus Jones, Isaiah Stevens can't play in the playoffs then because he'd be a two-way player. Now, obviously, a lot can happen between then. They could do some trades. They can cut some guys. And now they'd have the roster space. But as of right this second, we can't bank on having Isaiah Stevens come playoff time. If you could have signed Tyus Jones to an actual contract, you would have had him. But like I said, we all agree. I think all Heat fans would have wanted Tyus Jones, especially on a minimum. So the question is, why couldn't we get him? Why is that? Well, if you look at the Heat's uh, the cap situation here, which I got up, obviously you got uh, a lot of money tied into your top five guys, Jimmy Bam, Terry, Tyler, and Duncan. But it's really the minimum guys that you want to look at. They signed Josh Richardson to that minimum last season, gave him a player option, which, okay, fine, I, I guess. You know, he accepted the player option because he had that shoulder surgery. But now the two other minimums that you re-signed this year, or, or signed slash re-signed, was Thomas Bryant and Alec Burks. Those are the two names that Heat fans are going to kind of get pissed off at and say, why do we have Thomas Bryant and Alec Burks and not Tyus Jones? And there's a whole list of other guys. We'll get through some of the other free agents, but two that signed, you know, I guess including Tyus Jones, one more, a guy like Gary Trent, went from minimum to the Milwaukee Bucks. You don't think that he could have used Gary Trent Jr.? Someone who's been a decent perimeter defender, a sniper from beyond the arc, gets you a couple steals a night, and the Heat are sitting here with Thomas Bryant. Now, I'll speak on, because every time someone brings up the Thomas Bryant on Twitter, they're like, oh, well, the Heat promised they would re-sign Thomas Bryant, because what actually happened is, last, or in this offseason, I guess a few weeks ago, Thomas Bryant had a player option with the Heat. He could have stayed with Miami just outright, but he declined his player option and actually re-signed for a little bit less money. Now, why would he do that? Well, probably to help the team out. And when Bryant was trying to decide whether he wants to keep his last roster spot or, you know, or opt into his player option or not, that he probably said, hey, listen, uh, if you accept a little bit less, we can stay under the second apron. We'll make it up to you next year or when you retire. Who knows what uh, whatever under the table agreements they have with Thomas Bryant. But they said, hey, opt out, we'll resign you. So that's probably what happened because otherwise, why would Thomas Bryant agree to give up money for no reason? So Heat fans are like, oh, well, you can't be mad that they that they signed Thomas Bryant. That was agreed to before he opted out. Okay, but what you can be mad at is for giving Thomas Bryant a damn player option two years ago, or I guess two off seasons ago. Why would you give a minimum player a player option? That makes no sense. Now you commit. You, it's not in the front office hands whether they want to open this roster spot, shed that little bit of salary. It's not their choice. You give all that power to the player when you do that. And to give it to a minimum guy, that makes no sense. Minimum contract guys are not supposed to be guys that have a player option. If you wanted to do a team option, great. Because let's say a guy like Josh, they got Josh Richardson last year. If he balls out on the team option, fine, great, great news. Now you can opt into his team option and you have him another year on a value contract. Now, but what you don't do is give it to a guy like Thomas Bryant. Now, Josh Richardson, I said earlier, I kind of get it because the reports with him is that he actually turned down less money from elsewhere to come to the Heat, which I believe because I don't think Josh Richardson was a minimum player at, at that point last year. You know, he was coming off fine stints and, you know, Dallas and, and uh, the, popped around a few other places too. But I get it. Okay, so if you, if you talk to Josh Richardson, you say, hey, come to Miami for less money, but we'll give you a player option. In case you get hurt, you could opt in. And you know what? That worked out for Josh Richardson. If, if he, uh, you know, he obviously ended last season with a torn shoulder. If he didn't have that player option, he might have not been able to get on the team at all. Maybe teams wouldn't have trusted him at his age with his injury. But because he had the player option, he's able to stay here another year. Great. Good for Josh Richardson. You had to incentivize him to come over here. But Thomas Bryant? No, Thomas Bryant was a minimum player. He was getting played behind DeAndre Jordan's old ass in Denver the year before. Nobody was looking to sign Thomas Bryant. He, all of his offers were minimum deals. So you didn't have to incentivize him with a player option to come to the Miami Heat. You didn't have to do it. But because you did, you had to make this little back deal trade to say, hey, opt out, but we'll resign you. And now you're stuck with, with Thomas Bryant and you can't get Gary Trent Jr. You can't get uh, Tyus Jones. Let's go, go, let's go through some of these other free agents that I got up. These are all guys that are currently free agents that might be able to be, you know, accept the minimum because the market's dry now. You got Gordon Hayward, substantially better than Thomas Bryant, probably even Alec Burks. You got Markel Foltz. A guy that I still think has a lot of potential, can't shoot, but he could defend his ass off, could facilitate the ball. 
You still got other shooters. You got Luke uh, Luke Kennard. You got Doug McDermott. Robert Covington could have been uh, 3 and D. You got a bunch of names here. Jay Crowder. You could have got Jay Crowder. Any of these names. Precious Atua is still a free agent. Like, you, you, the guy you traded for Kyle Lowry is still a free agent. You could have got him for a minimum instead of Thomas Bryant. Now, none of these names here are, are great. There's some that stand out. Certainly, a lot of people like uh, uh, Lonnie Walker, who I would have loved here, come back home to Miami. A lot of people... Well, I see Patty Mills here's name too. That boy is balling with uh, Australia. That's not the name I was thinking of. Uh, but Dennis Smith Jr., that's another guy that's probably going to get signed for minimum. And Heat fans are going to be mad that we're stuck here with Thomas Bryant. Now, obviously, Alec Burks is part of that. The Heat did not have to sign Burks. If they didn't, they could have got uh, they could have got Tyus Jones. And I do think Alec Burks is a good player, or Alec Burks. Uh, and I think that he is on a good value as well. I think he's probably a guy that could have went more for a minimum. But... I would have taken Tyus Jones instead. And I see Barry Jackson on Twitter saying, oh, the Heat couldn't have known that Tyus Jones was going to last. That's the Heat's job to do. And whether they could have known or could not have known, in hindsight, it was a bad move. We are allowed to judge the team in hindsight. I hate when people are like, oh, well, you weren't saying this three years ago. Oh, well, you're just saying that now in hindsight. Yes, yes, I am. That's what we do when we review moves. I, I, can't, I can't say, oh, I don't blame them because I would have did the same thing back then. No, I could, I could say, hey, you made a move. Let, we're seeing how it plays out. And in hindsight, it was the wrong move. That's just the fact of the matter. I guess I'm not saying they could have avoided it or they should have avoided it. I'm just giving my opinion on it. And that was a bad move to sign Alec Burks. A guy that's 32 years old, uh, averaged six points a night with New York last year. Uh, but I guess on the season, he did shoot 37% from three on five attempts. So that's fine. He had a good playoffs. So I know that as well. He's a good player, but... Man, what is Gordon Hayward doing sitting out there? What was Tyus Jones doing sitting out there? It's frustrating as even Gary Trent Jr. You could, Gary Trent Jr. is substantially better than Alec Burks. I feel very comfortable saying that. But no, he goes to one of our biggest rivals in the Milwaukee Bucks because of the Miami Heat's poor asset management. It's frustrating, man. It it really, really is frustrating. I don't know. I don't know. I could talk about these free agents for a while, but I feel like I feel like you guys share in the frustration with me there. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a whole bunch of free agents still out there. Some of these guys are kind of nice. Even Isaac Okoro. I mean, he's a great defender. I know he can't shoot for crap, but maybe he could have got something out of him. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's kind of the deal with, with Thomas Bryant. Uh, I believe it was some co- sort of backdoor deal. And I guess if the Heat, you know, if it works out with Isaiah Stevens and maybe they make a trade, you know, that's something too. You, you can't bank on a trade. Because I saw Barry Jackson talking too, and he was like, oh, well, the Heat signed Alec Burks because they needed the shooting as insurance in case they traded Tyler or Duncan. So you made a move to sign insurance before you even had another move set up? That's bad asset management. You don't say, oh, let's sign Alec Burks because he can shoot in case we trade Tyler. Because now what happens when you don't trade Tyler Hero? And they should have known they couldn't trade Tyler Hero because they've been trying to trade him for three years and nobody wants him because he's a negative asset. Nobody wants Tyler Hero, but the Heat thought, oh, maybe we could trade him. With what? How, with, for who? Who are you going to trade him for? Nobody wants him. Terrible asset management by the Heat over the last several seasons. Terrible. You can go back to when they gave Dwayne Dedman $9 million a couple off seasons ago because they said he'd be a tradable contract. And what happened is, is they attached a second round pick to get rid of Dwayne Dedman. Stupidity. And that's the reason this team is in the, the position they're in now. It is. I should not be this mad about seeing another team get Tyus Jones on a minimum. But when you look at the fit, that's something the Heat need, man. That's something they need. Someone who can get them organized. And he's going to a team that's already stacked. Gary Trent Jr. is already going to a team that's stacked. And the Miami Heat are sitting here with Thomas Bryant and Alec Burks. Uh, I'm not going to keep talking about the free agent stuff because I've been going for 14 minutes. A few other things I want to speak on uh, is the Olympics officially start tomorrow. That's on Sunday. And it's very exciting because USA plays Team Serbia in which Nikola Jovic is officially back. I had a video solely talking about him a few videos ago as well. I don't know if he's going to start or what the deal is with him there. But I think we're going to see him match up with Bam a little bit because Bam doesn't start either, I guess. But when he does play, it's with Anthony Davis. And they're probably going to have to put Nikola Jokic on AD, meaning that Nikola Jovic will be on Bam. So I'm not a a big Olympic guy. But I will definitely be tuned in to this game. Well, I'll probably watch most of the games because Bam's playing. And I think Spolster is an assistant coach. But I'll be locked into this one because you get to see Yovi, man. I'm hyped to see him. Uh, I was very, very high on his potential because if you saw his jump, obviously, from la- or from his first season to last year, it was substantial. 
I think a lot of that is because of all the experience he got playing in the FIBA World Cup in which Serbia actually plays second. They got the silver medal there, whatever they call it. Uh, and I just think that experience will be so much greater for him this st- on this stage. Now getting to play with Nikola Jokic, who I don't think played in the World Cup last year, uh, getting to play you know, on literally the biggest stages, the actual Olympics, uh, I'm very excited for him. Uh, but I don't want to speak a ton on that either because, uh, you know, like I said, I have a whole video about that. Uh, but uh, only a few other things uh, related, to be honest. Uh, most of the stuff is not basketball related. I'm going to talk about because uh, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, in fact, none of it is. Uh, I do want to say, though, in terms of the channel, uh, I don't know what the content's going to be like over the next week and a half because I'm actually going on vacation. I will be out of town from Wednesday to Thursday the following week. So I'm out of town for eight days. I will be in Hawaii. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, I have a bunch of videos that I've been working on because I'm trying to schedule upload. So I have a video come out every single day I'm in Hawaii. I don't know if I'll have them all done on time, but just a heads up there in case something is, there's some breaking news that I'm not mentioning in a video or something. That's why the, the videos were, were pre-recorded. Uh, maybe I'll have another podcast come out. Uh, maybe I'll record on Tuesday again before I leave. Uh, we'll kind of see how the, the news cycle takes us there. But uh, just so y'all know, it'll be a, I have some good videos coming out though. Some some pretty uh, heavily researched videos on stuff. I'm talking about uh, uh, all the the Heat's you know biggest contracts. Talking about if they're negative assets. I have another one discussing the possibility of wearing Bam starting together. So I got some good stuff. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the only really other news Miami sports related that's happened over the last couple of days is uh, I guess you had Tua sign his extension yesterday. I also had a full video talking about that. I forgot to mention a couple of things though, like. People kept saying, oh, like, oh, it's the market value, you know, market value, whatever. To me, I think all those other guys are overpaid also. I think Jared Goff is overpaid. I think Trevor Lawrence is overpaid. And just and so I think those teams made made a mistake giving those guys big money. So just because those guys gave made a mistake, those teams made a mistake, doesn't mean the Dolphins should make a mistake too. Now, I'm not gonna say it's it's a mistake because I understand, because I'll, I'll say this. I didn't love the contract just because I kind of would have rather have the season play out and see how next season go and, you know, next season plays out and go from there. But a lot of people say, oh, well, you're built to win now. What happens if he balls out? And I said, hey, if he balls out, good. I'll give him however much money he wants. If Tua goes out there and wins the Super Bowl, you think I care that we have to pay him more money? No, we're paying to someone who is proven. And a lot of people say, well, oh, even if he doesn't ball out, you got to resign him anyways or you lose him for nothing. And I say, fine. I don't, I don't think because there's no better options out there, I don't think that's a good enough reason to, to tie yourself into salary cap hell because there's no better options out there. I just, I don't think so. And on top of that, the, another pushback I get is people say, oh, well, your team is built to win now. So what are you going to do? You're going to go in the draft? Well, I get it because I agree. The team is built to win now. You just re-signed Jalen Waddle. You're probably going to re, uh, re-extend Tyreek Hill pretty soon too. He's up for a contract extension. He said he wants to stay here. So I get it. But and then I and then I tell myself, well, I guess they did have to resign Tua. So the Dolphins kind of put themselves in a bad spot. Unfortunately, they've hit on some draft picks of late, but they did not hit on a big one, in my opinion, which is Tua Tangvaloa. He's very young. He's 26. I think he can have time to improve. But I'll just say, as of right now, I don't believe in him. I would have rather see how the season plays out. But like I just kind of talked myself into, you're built to win now. So the your only hope was going in the draft and maybe getting a C.J. Stroud who could ball out his rookie year. But the odds of that is ridiculous. I feel like the odds of Tua improving on the things he needs to work on, like mobility, you know, well, he was healthy last year, but the year before he wasn't healthy. I think there's a higher likelihood that he improves what he needs to improve upon than the Dolphins drafting someone who's a stud right away. So I don't know. It's a difficult situation. Uh, Same with the Marlins. I literally just saw like 30 minutes ago they traded Jazz Chisholm. Thank God I'm not a big Marlins fan. Or, I, you know, I root for all the local teams, but I'm just not a big baseball guy mostly because the Marlins have pretty much always sucked. Uh, and if they were good, I probably would get into it. We all say I got the Panther shirt on. I'll better believe I've been into that the last couple years. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't imagine being a Marlins fan. I feel like I would drive myself crazy because some people think the Heat are cheap. No, that Marlins team is cheap. They don't want to pay anyone. And all they do is just get some good assets, sell them off for nothing. Get some good assets, sell them off for nothing. And in a sport that has no salary cap, you got no shot of winning with a cheap owner. None at all. Uh, so shout out to my Marlins friends out there. Shout out to Jazz Chisholm, who I know was awesome and seemed like a great guy. 
And I know he's a great player, so that kind of sucks. Anyways, that's all I got to say for this video. Let me know y'all thoughts down below. Is there any of those NBA free agents that you would have liked to see on the Heat instead of Thomas Bryant or Alec Burks? Uh, go ahead and look up the whole list. There's there's a bunch here. Like I said, Rob Covington, Landry Shaman, Taylor Horn Tucker, Jetty Osmond. Uh, there's a bunch of guys here. So let me know y'all thoughts down below. Make sure to like the video if you're on YouTube and subscribe. If you're on the audio side, you can leave five stars because all of that support greatly helps me out a ton. And I'll see y'all on the next one. So peace out. Look, pull up in the city trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own. I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off. Yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.